bunch of men that wrote a bunch of stories. I don't know if you believe that. Some do. It's just a bunch of stories. It's everything I told you what the Bible says. So you can't trust the Bible. Okay, just throw the Bible away. Just get rid of it. Do you believe there truly was 12 apostles? Do you really believe there's a man named Peter? Do you really believe that Paul later became an apostle? Do you believe he was an, a real human being? Do you, do you believe that all, all the disciples, Andrew, all of them, John, do you believe they all were real people? If you don't, grab a history book. Grab an encyclopedia because you can get the most ungodly encyclopedia and acknowledge those men existed because there's too much documentation to prove that they existed. They were real human beings that existed. Now, whether you don't believe there was a Jesus or not, say this to say there was no Jesus. These men existed. And what did each of them do? They testified about Jesus' resurrected resurrection. And they were willing to die for it. So let's say that it was all made up, that these 12 guys all got together and say, we're going to make up a story. That Jesus rose from the grave. And they make up a game plan. And they say, this is what we're going to say. This happened, this happened, this happened. We're going to write a fake book. Do all that. And that happens. Those guys are really nuts. You know why? Almost every one of them died for that lie. So if the lie about Jesus being resurrected, if they did see Jesus after he died, if Paul did not have an encounter with the resurrected Jesus, and they're willing to die for him, they're lunatics. They're crazy to die for somebody that didn't rise from the grave. So I would argue logic says that they're willing to die for Jesus, and he rose from the grave. Logic would say that Jesus rose from the grave. Do people lie to save their life? Listen. Do people lie to save their life? Don't they? Absolutely. How many people lie so they can die? Something to think about. People will lie to save their life. Not too many people will lie to have their life taken. And so the disciples are willing to have their life taken for the sake of the message that Jesus rose from the grave. That's outside of the Bible. That's just history of those men dying for the testimony. Okay? Now let's take one of those disciples. Anybody ever hear of Peter? Apostle Peter. Almost everybody's heard of Apostle Peter. Not everybody, because I grew up as an atheist. I never heard the story about Peter. I never heard the story about Peter until I became a Christian. But most people have gone to Sunday school, gone to some kind of program, something or another. So Peter is, is, is what? He's a disciple. He loves Jesus. He loves Jesus all his heart. And Jesus tells Peter, what is he going to do? He's going to deny Christ. How many times? Three times. Does Peter deny Jesus three times? Okay. Would you call Peter maybe a little bit of a coward? A little bit of a scared cat? Was Peter at Jesus' crucifixion? <laughs> As far as we tell, he was not there. All we know that he was there for sure was John. Does it say any other disciples was there? Was he there? Why would he be at his crucifixion if he wasn't there at his trial? I think he was there. You know what he's doing? Hiding. Looking to see if Jesus really being crucified. But I don't think he was there saying, Hey, I'm a Jesus follower. You can crucify me just like you did Jesus. You think he was doing that? No. He was a coward. He was afraid. He was worried about his life. How do we know that? Because even after Jesus is buried and before he rises from the grave, what are all the disciples doing? Hiding in a room, afraid that they may be associated with Jesus. So they always saw what happened to Jesus. And they're saying Jesus didn't die. I mean, Jesus didn't get raised from the grave. They're disappointed. They're sad. They thought he was going to rise from the grave. He didn't. They're all disappointed. They're, they're, they're discouraged. They're afraid. You have that Peter. Listen. That's the same Peter who does what? After he meets the resurrected Jesus. He starts preaching the gospel and 3,000 people get saved. I want you to think about this. If Jesus did raise Christ from the grave, if Peter didn't see the resurrected Jesus, why did he suddenly get bold? Why did he suddenly start preaching the gospel? Why did he turn around and go to where he could die? Why would he do that if the truth of the, of the resurrection wasn't true? Did he get some mad that got high? So he's high. He just went around high as can be to tell what, what Jesus did. Do you think that's it? I don't think that's it. But I don't think it happened. But maybe they had opium, so he did some heroin. If he did heroin, he 
sleeping the whole time. You better be telling about Jesus. And so Adam, and obviously, something took place in his life. And the only thing we know that took place in his life is an encounter with the resurrected Jesus Christ. So listen to this, 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 this cowardly Peter. This is what he says in the book of Acts, Acts 2, 36. People are there. They're there for the day of Pentecost. There's all kinds of people in Jerusalem. Hundreds and hundreds of people. Different languages, different nationalities. It says that the disciples are baptized in the Holy Spirit. They start speaking other tongues. It says they're praising God in all kinds of different languages. And then all of a sudden, Peter stands up in front of all these people. Every people of every kind of nationality. The Jews, the Greeks, everybody. The Roman soldiers, whoever they be there. And he says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. He says to the looks of strength, and he says, you crucified him. Is that a good idea that the people who crucified Jesus kill him? Is it a good idea to look at them and say, you know what, you killed Jesus. Not a good idea. What could happen? They'll kill you for saying that. So what changed? He had an encounter with the resurrection, resurrected Jesus. Acts 3.15 this is what Peter, again, he talks to another group, but he says, And they killed the prince of life, life whom God has raised from the dead, wherefore we are witnesses. He is saying that he is a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why was he willing to die for Jesus? Because he saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Next one, the Bible talks about 500 eyewitnesses. It says over 500 eyewitnesses. 1 Corinthians 15, 6, Peter says over 500 people saw Jesus after his resurrection. So over 500 people see Jesus after he's resurrected. Is that quite a few people? Okay? Now we know 500 people during that time got on the internet and said, this is the lie we're going to tell. You think they did that? How could 500 people all get together at one time? If 500 Christians got together at one time, the Roman soldiers would have known something was going on and they would have destroyed it. So they obviously didn't all gather together. So there was 500 people, they got together, and here's what some people say. They all had an hallucination at the same time. So they all are out there, the, Jesus is getting ready to get resurrected, they're all out there, they're standing there, and Jesus says, I'm going to get jumped up. And they say, this is cool. And they just start just getting themselves all stirred up, and they're all excited. All of a sudden, they start hallucinating, and Jesus ran away, and they thought he went up in the sky. Well, if you believe that, guess what? You found another miracle. 500 people that were, that were mesmerized and hallucinated and saw Jesus rise up in the sky. So this saying is exaggeration. Only 500. I mean, instead of 500, only 100 saw him. Would you believe 100 people that saw him? What about only 10? When do you stir? I don't believe anymore. We know ten disciples die because of seeing the resurrected Jesus. At least ten people die for what they believe and what they knew to be true. But the Bible says there's over 500. Did they all lie at the potential of dying with sharing the gospel? I don't think so. Okay, now let's take one other other uh, apostle. He was uh, after later after the twelve disciples. It's Paul. How many know that Paul? I I'll never say that Paul actually committed murder. I won't say that Paul killed Christians, but was Paul behind Christians getting killed? The Bible doesn't say he, he ever killed a single Christian, but he says that he would pay money to help the Christians kill. And so Paul was certainly an accomplice to murder. And so Paul's an accomplice to murder. Would you say that Paul did not like Jesus? Would you say Paul didn't like Christianity? So what happens? Paul, who's a murderer, or at least helped Christians to be murdered, does what? He's willing to be in prison, beaten and left for dead because of his encounter with Jesus. Paul says he was on a road and he had an encounter with Jesus. It was a resurrected Jesus body. So, by the way, you do know if Jesus resurrected, he can show up anywhere, right? And he's fully God, fully man. So out of it, he has an encounter with Jesus, and what does he do? He goes around preaching the gospel everywhere. He gets in prison many times. He gets beaten. He gets whipped. He describes that. He says, I know a man, and he describes a man who got beaten up 
took that stone and died and went to heaven. And when he describes that man, you know who he's describing? Seven. Himself, his own experience. He's saying there was a man that got stone left for dead and he had an encounter in heaven. So you got this Paul who's going to be beaten, do all that he does, it isn't being in prison, and he's doing it because he wants to start a rumor about him seeing Jesus. He wants to start a lie. Or was it true? Oh, I know. He had an hallucination. He was riding just along, just by his own business on a trail, and he picked up a leaf and sucked on it, and he got a hallucination. And after he got that hallucination, he imagined he had an encounter with Jesus. You believe that? Okay? So what did he have to have? A true encounter with Jesus. Then my last point. My last point is testimony. Change lives. I don't know if you believe any of the other stuff. I don't know. Maybe you have an imagination that believes that it was all fairy tale. These people were dumb enough to die and all that took the place with that. But you're going to have a hard time denying the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ because of one main thing. And that's the testimony of believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Because, see, you can tell me that's not true. You say you don't believe in the Bible. You can tell me that you don't believe anything archaeology has shown, history has shown. You don't believe any of that. But you're not going to tell me that Jesus didn't rise from the grave because it's changed my life. You can't steal my testimony. You can tell me I'm crazy what I believe and everything else. But you know what? I was a follower of one person and I didn't even know it. And that was Satan. Because if you're not following God, you're following the prince of the world of the air. The prince of the air in the world. And so out of it is that God grabbed my life, took part of my life and changed my life. A person who hated every human being. A person who thought it was the best person out of anybody in the world. A person who wanted to be a cop and lock up every single scumbag human being there is. A few of us are in this room, by the way. A few of us have been scumbags at times. A few of us have sinned at times. A few of us have fallen short at times. I wanted to, be, to take every single person, lock them up. I thought I was the best human being there is. And all of a sudden, I have an encounter with the Most High God. All of a sudden, I do a little crazy thing. I say a little prayer, and I say, Jesus, I don't know if you're true or not, but the pastor guy told me that if I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and if I believe that you rose from the day, he says that I'll be born again, that I'll have the Spirit of God living in me, and I will be a changed human being. So, God, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't even know if you're true or not, but I'm going to do that little prayer, and I'm just going to trust that something happens in the midst of it. That's all I did. In a Denny's bathroom stall. Did you hear me? In a Denny's bathroom stall. It doesn't matter where you do it at. If it's real, will it take place? Will it? If it's real, if it's true? And I did it. And when I did it, I even tell you, no angel showed up in the bathroom. No lights came on in the bathroom. Nothing whatsoever happened in that bathroom stall whatsoever when I did that. But when I drove home, I couldn't stop crying because the first time in my life I felt love. Because the first time in my life I felt love for people that I never had before. For the first time in my life, when I drove through Oregon, I can remember to this day, if you know Table Rock in Oregon, by Bedford, Oregon, it's called Table Rock, it's a plateau. I looked at it and it looked so bright, it looked so shiny, everything looked like it had light. But it was amazing to me, it's like somebody, did an artist just colored everything up, it's like I experienced life for the first time in my life. And I remember him telling me, if you accept Jesus in your life, please give me a call. But there was no cell phones to do that at the time. So I drove, I sped, I broke the law as a Christian. First time being a Christian, I broke the law. I started speeding to get home to call him up and say, accept in Jesus and it's real. And I can tell you from that day on, I know for sure that Jesus Christ rose from that grave because he's been resurrected in my own life. Along the way, I've made tons of mistakes. I've made bad choices. I have gone down roads I shouldn't have gone. But along the way, every time God brought conviction, I repent. I ask God to forgive me. And I can tell you I'm a different human being because of Jesus Christ. And that's my testimony. And there's multitudes of testimonies. There's millions of testimonies of people that have the same experience. And to go around and say, well, all those experiences are fake and not real. You've been brainwashed. You've been dead and that. That takes a whole lot more faith than to believe that there's a Jesus that rose and resurrected from the grave. And I can tell you, anybody that's truly born again, you're not going to be able to convince them that it is 
are real. Now, along the way, have I questioned my salvation? Yes, I have. When I turned around and was a Christian with a gun to my head, I questioned Jesus was really in my life. When I lived for 13 years with depression and suicidal thoughts, I questioned Jesus was really real in my life. But you know what? Something in me says he's still real. Even if I messed up, even if I'm screwed up, even if I know I'm making my bad choices, I know that God is real. And I believe that's the only thing that kept me alive, is to believe that somehow God is real. And years later, I don't have to have any kind of medicine. I don't have to deal with anything. But when it comes to suicidal thoughts, when they come, I say, Jesus, thank me, God. Leave me right now. How does that happen? By the power of God. And there's testimony and testimony of individuals who are drug addicts who turn around and cannot quit drugs no matter what they try. And they have an encounter with Jesus and their life is turned around. There are people who are mass murderers who accept Christ they may be in prison. But you know what? They're not killing people in prison. They're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in prison. Why? Because they've been born again because God changed their life. They're in prison and people are telling them, you better not talk about Bad about what you're doing. And then you do, you say, God, help me. And the more you pray out, the more you 
idols. Doesn't he? So as we close, I have an altar call. If you never accepted Jesus Christ in your life, today is the day to do it. This is Preacher Rich D. Creating Futures committed to equipping individuals and churches to fulfill the Great Commission, which is the lead of individuals to Christ as their Lord and Savior, so that they may have eternal life, and discipling them so that they may become devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 1-866-WANT-GOD. That is 1-866-WANT-GOD. If you like this video, please click on the link below and subscribe to our Creating Futures channel. To learn about going to heaven, click on the attached video or go to creatingfutures.org. That is creatingfutures.org.